people resurrected an ancient monument, but soon came to regret it deeply. The film begins with a young boy in a yellow jacket, racing through the forest in terror. He's too afraid to look back, desperately searching for a hiding place. But soon, he stumbles to his knees, overwhelmed with despair, holding back tears as he remembers the horrifying events that happened today. Meanwhile, five teenagers, Queenie, the straight-A student, Carl, the Noah tall Reggie, the troublemaker, Bess, the beauty, and Nolan, the boy secretly in love with her, are on a field trip in an old school bus driven by Joe, a gentle, elderly driver. During the ride, they hear that tonight's lunar eclipse will be visible without a telescope. Joe wonders if anyone will watch it, but the teens brush it off. Their minds are on the usual teenage dramas and worries. Reggie urges Joe to drive faster, but the old, red bus can barely handle the current pace and seems ready to break down any moment. Carl tries to engage his classmates with a riddle, but it's too simple, and Queenie solves it before he even finishes, which annoys him. Joe, trying to keep them entertained, offers up a tougher riddle, one he says they won't find online. Seven letters make up my name, and I'm hard to come by. Not monsters, not gods, not dragons can tame me, and bare hands won't break me. Think hard now, without me, virtue and courage are just empty words. I'm what gives strength to the golden-maned king of beasts. So, who am I? The group falls silent, each of them stumped, unable to guess the answer. Suddenly, the bus halts, the road is blocked by a fallen tree. Joe decides not to turn back but instead takes a detour down a remote road. Unaware of a corpse hidden beneath some branches nearby, he continues. After a few kilometers, they stop again for a dead deer lying in the road. Joe asks the teens to stay inside while he drags the animal off the road, assuming it was hit by a car. But as he moves the deer, Joe senses he's not alone. Moments later, he returns to the bus, but he's not alone. An escaped convict named Pedro Mingella, who was hiding in the forest, now holds Joe at gunpoint and forces his way onto the bus, threatening to take the teens hostage. Joe tries to reassure them, but Pedro's menacing presence makes the danger clear. He orders Queenie to switch seats, taking her spot up front to keep a close watch on Joe, whom he now forces to drive. Pedro warns that if Joe doesn't follow his instructions, he'll start shooting, putting everyone on board in serious danger. Carl suddenly recognizes Pedro, he's the fugitive that's been all over the news. Just before the trip, Carl had been having lunch with his dad, recounting exaggerated tales of his own bravery, when a news flash about Pedro Mingella, a notorious criminal known for his hatred of children, appeared on the screen. Carl's father, a police officer, had been searching for Pedro for days and assured his son there was nothing to fear. Now, Carl realizes they're face to face with a violent criminal who seems unlikely to let any of them go. Joe continues to follow Pedro's every order, driving late into the evening. Realizing that the teen's parents may start panicking when they can't reach them, Pedro orders everyone to throw their phones out the window, cutting off any possible tracking. Reggie resists, trying to show courage, but Joe quietly pleads with him to cooperate and not provoke Pedro, who is armed and dangerous. Reluctantly, Reggie gives up his phone, though he knows it likely seals their fate. Joe, anxious for the kid's safety, drives on and fails to notice a fallen road sign that warns of an upcoming restricted military area. As they continue, Nolan and Reggie quietly plot to tackle Pedro and grab the gun. They're hopeful this could be their chance, but Bess quickly warns them off, pointing out the risks of such an attempt. Pedro, sensing their restlessness, reminds them he's not to be underestimated. Eventually, the bus enters a dark, ominous tunnel and, without warning, breaks down. Pedro instantly accuses Joe of sabotaging their escape and threatens him with the gun, but Joe truly can't restart the bus. Using Queenie as leverage, Pedro orders Joe to check the engine, though Joe can't see what's causing the issue, much less how to fix it. Suddenly, the tunnel lights flicker out, leaving them in near total darkness. Only the faint headlights illuminate the road ahead, casting eerie shadows into the blackness. In that unsettling silence, Joe and Pedro notice a strange figure seated in the middle of the road. Pedro, growing more paranoid, orders Joe to approach and confront it. The teens watch in horror as Joe, the only adult they can rely on, walks toward this mysterious figure, a mix of fear and dread in his eyes. He approaches, but as he gets close, he realizes it's no person at all, it's a creature, lurking, and it attacks, ending Joe's life in an instant. The teen's world shatters. Joe was their last hope, and now he's gone. Pedro is equally shaken, gripping his gun as he hurries back into the bus. He slams the door shut and barks at the kids to stay in their seats. Desperate to escape, Pedro realizes Joe had the keys, trapping them all. Furious, he orders Carl to go retrieve the keys, but Nolan offers to go instead. Before he can, however, Bess unexpectedly steps up, bravely volunteering herself. Moving with extreme caution, Bess retrieves the keys and takes in the horrific scene. She sees that Joe died from a savage bite, and she realizes the creature recoils from light, as if terrified by it. 
Back inside, Bess hands the keys to Pedro and delivers the gut-wrenching news about Joe. Without hesitation, Pedro shoves his gun to Reggie's head, forcing him to try and start the bus. Reggie, terrified, tries his best but can't get it running. Nolan and Reggie seize a rare opportunity, rushing Pedro and managing to wrest the gun from him. But Pedro just laughs coldly, daring them to pull the trigger. Just then, a sinister scraping sound fills the bus, the creature is now on the roof, its weight making the metal groan. Distracted, Pedro seizes back the gun, clearly desperate, and storms outside, determined to face the creature head on. The teens, wide-eyed, watch as Pedro steps into the darkness, gun drawn, firing wildly. The eerie echoes of his gunshots fill the tunnel, growing fainter with each second. As they sit there, trapped and horrified, a terrifying realization dawns on them. They're caught in a nightmare, with no way out, between a ruthless, unstable criminal and a monster lurking in the shadows. A few moments later, they spot the monster closing in on Pedro, attacking him with brutal force, sinking its teeth into his head. The creature, a monstrous, insect-like beast covered in coarse hair with jagged teeth, looms just outside the window, sending a wave of terror through the kids. Panic erupts as Reggie struggles to restart the bus, but it's no use. Hope is slipping away, and he's convinced they're all doomed. Nolan snaps at him to shake off the fear. Now's not the time to give up. We have to stick together. Just minutes later, they hear the monster wreaking havoc on the bus's wiring. It cracks open the rear door and squeezes inside. Trapped, the teens scramble to escape, but the front door is jammed tight. The monster is getting closer, but Bess buys them some time, shining a flashlight directly into its face. Nolan stays behind, trying to keep the creature at bay while the others force open the door and make their escape. The five teens dash into an underground maze, sealing every door behind them as they flee, hoping the monster won't be able to track them. Soon, they realize they're lost, with no way out. As they navigate the tunnels, they stumble upon a room containing a map and a floor plan of an old military base. Knowing the creature is sensitive to light, Queenie suggests they head for the control center and turn on the generator. Nolan examines the map, trying to figure out the best path, while the group takes a moment to honor the memory of Joe. Reggie is hit hardest by the loss, Joe had been his father's best friend and was wrongfully imprisoned. After a tense pause, Nolan decides they need to make a run for the main generator. The group agrees that he and Bess should go, leaving the others behind to stay hidden. As Nolan and Bess make their way through the maze, they grow closer, finding comfort in each other's company. Nolan doesn't hold back, sharing his feelings for her, and it seems the feeling is mutual. Soon, they come across a strange device resembling a chair, covered in lights and lamps. They realize someone had tried to fight the monster, but the evidence is grim. A skeleton nearby confirms that the person lost their battle with the creature lurking in the dark. Meanwhile, Queenie asks Reggie to walk her to the bathroom, too scared to go alone. Reluctantly, he agrees, giving her space for some privacy, though he's also hoping to confess his feelings. Before he can say anything, he turns around and realizes she's gone. Panicked, he rushes back to Carl, telling him that Queenie has been captured by the monster. Armed with torches, the two set off to find her. They discover her in the monster's grip, but a quick flash of fire scares the creature away. They save her just in time, but Queenie's badly injured and on the verge of losing consciousness. Carl helps her walk, but just as they're about to head back, Reggie is grabbed by the monster. Now, it's up to Queenie and Carl to save him. Reggie is desperately struggling, but the creature is too strong. He's ready to give up when suddenly, a miracle happens. Back in the tunnels, Nolan and Bess uncover photos, journals, and drawings from someone obsessed with destroying the monster. They also find the main generator and manage to power it up. The lights flood the maze, forcing the monster to retreat. Reggie is saved, but as they venture deeper, Nolan and Bess discover a book revealing the identity of the person who had once declared war on the creature. Just as they're piecing it all together, terrifying noises echo through the hallways. Fearing the worst, they brace themselves for another attack, but to their relief, it's their friends. The five teens regroup and head back to the place that had once served as the command center for the monster hunt. They learn that the man who had declared war on the creature was Giulio Sarpi, who lost his younger sister, Isabella, in 1971. Giulio and Isabella were inseparable, always traveling and exploring the world. One day, they set off on an adventure, but Giulio, distracted by something in the distance, lost sight of his sister. She wandered into a tunnel and vanished, taken by the monster. Giulio fled in terror, afraid he would be the next victim, but he could never accept losing his sister. For 40 years, he obsessed over the creature, determined to learn how to defeat it. Giulio knew everything about the monster, which he called the Night Wanderer. It appeared every 20 years, always just before a lunar eclipse. Giulio had set a trap and was ready to fight, but he lost. The monster took his life, and Nolan and Bess later discovered a skeleton. Now, the group understands that the Night Wanderer is a parasite that will never release its victim. It bit Queenie and tasted her blood, meaning it will relentlessly pursue her and she'll never be free. Determined to finish what Giulio started, the teens agree to stay in the maze and do everything in their power to destroy the monster. With courage and the desire to honor Giulio's legacy, they create a plan to trap the creature. They decide to turn off the lights and use a radio as a decoy. 
Reggie takes his position in a chair surrounded by lights, prepared to wait for the monster. Once it gets close enough, Bass will start the generator, and Reggie will activate the light trap designed to destroy the creature. After carefully checking and rehearsing their plan, the teens turn off the lights and prepare for the monster's arrival. They've accounted for every detail, and there shouldn't be any mistakes. But in the dark, fear creeps in, and Carl starts to panic. Doubt sets in as he questions whether their plan will actually work, but Nolan calms him down. A few tense minutes later, the monster emerges from the maze, drawn toward the sound of the radio. It stops right in front of Reggie. He's ready to trigger the light trap, but Bess struggles to turn on the generator. The creature creeps closer to Reggie, preparing to strike. Nolan realizes his friend is in danger and whistles to draw the monster's attention. As the creature shifts toward Nolan, Bess shouts, trying to lure it away. When the creature enters the room that had been Julio's office, Nolan activates the light, blasting the creature with intense energy. Carl lunges at the creature, holding it back long enough for Bess and Queenie to break free from the trap. The girls manage to escape and find an exit, but the monster is close behind. However, it can't leave the tunnel. With daylight outside, the creature retreats, hiding from the sun's deadly rays. Soon, the three boys emerge from the tunnel, torches in hand, and charge toward the monster, hurting it into the trap. The creature can't escape, leaving the teens with the chance to set it ablaze. The creature writhes and screams in agony as it burns. As the flames consume it, the teens celebrate their hard-earned victory. In that moment, they realize the answer to old Joe's riddle was courage. It took courage to face the monster, to overcome every obstacle, and to work together as a team. Only by confronting their fears and putting aside their conflicts were they able to defeat a stronger enemy. When they return to the town and try to explain everything to the police and their parents, no one believes them. But despite the disbelief, the bond between the teens grows stronger than ever. Some time later, police arrive at the tunnel to investigate the teen story. One skeptical officer heads down to check the area. He surveys the rooms and finds nothing out of the ordinary, until suddenly, the flashlight flickers and goes out. The detective hears the ominous sound of the night wanderer's raspy breathing growing closer, and before he can react, the creature is behind him, launching a deadly attack. The teenagers find themselves in an extreme situation, where they are forced to trust each other and work together, despite their fears and differences. What drives people to unite when their lives are at risk? Is this solidarity a survival instinct, or a true reflection of human nature? Share your thoughts in the comments down below, give a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.